TNTM the show presents Talking Nerdy October 2023 with your hosts Pablo Gunner oh Slay J and the Ambassador and we are here to talk nerdy to you about the nerdy stuff that we've been doing lately right yes or we've, we've yeah. seen not not really like a whole theme but ha- happy Halloween if we get this posted in time yeah if not Day of the no. Dead <laughs> it might be it might be, it might be yeah. Dia de los Muertos. So yeah, we're gonna cover uh, Ahsoka, Hereditary, maybe a little Loki talk, Evil Dead Rise, FNAF, Five Nights at Freddy's if you don't know, uh, Spider Man Two, the video yeah. game from that was uh, on Sony s- s- PlayStation Five only on PlayStation Five. Yeah, only yes. on PlayStation Five. Exclusive. And then Super Mario Wonder. For the Switch. For the Switch, which we are going to be giving away at the end of November. So keep, keep an eye out for that keep on our your Facebook. Eyes peeled. Yes. So Ahsoka concluded. Yes. And so I want to talk about Ahsoka because I've been talking about it with everybody. It, I loved it. I thought it was a phenomenal show. I had a blast through and through. My biggest qualms with it, though, are that they had. A spoiler alert, this is a spoiler review, that the best episode was, like, in the middle of the season. Or, yeah, it was in the middle of the season, I was like, you can't top that. Because it was, like, Clone Wars, uh, like, the show, and Rebels. uh, I guess more more Clone Wars, like, come to life, Mm -hmm. right? And and that, that episode was just so good and so epic. And it's so funny because people talk crap about it all the time, right? Yes. They're like, oh, they're milking this cow. And they'll have like a picture of like a Vader or Anakin all like milked dry as a cow. <laughs> but people love it. I love it. Like yes. it's, it's what the fans, the real fans, the people that watch Clone Wars, the people that have seen Rebels, that's what this show, it's, this show is for those people. And it's cool. Like they did a lot of stuff from... Like, like little callbacks from the animated stuff where it's like, hey, this ship's flying in the air this way, and then they do the exact same thing with like in the show, and it's like it's cool. I've seen a lot of TikToks of them like doing it like side by side, and like even the dialogue's the same. And I was like, that's really cool. It's a cool callback to like all the hardcore fans that have been there from the beginning. But yes, it's it was a great show. I don't, I don't understand the hate on it because I understand it's just a little bit uh, slow at the beginning trying to establish the story, but that's with anything. You kind of have to be patient and then it kind of hits you like a brick wall, you know? I thought it was, the thing is, I thought it was super intense right away because there was fighting, like they send the robots after Ahsoka and she's like in that little temple or whatever underground mm-hmm. and like that whole thing was so cool and then she even fights that an Inquisitor yeah. Right away, and mm-hmm. that fight was so awesome. That was, that was epic, the lightsaber fight, yes. <laughs> I think a lot of times what happens is our imaginations get the best of us, and we go like, oh, it's Starkiller. The Inquisitor's Starkiller. Oh, that would be so epic if they yes. put Starkiller in. And it's Vader's mm-hmm. uh, Vader's apprentice, dark side apprentice, versus his light side apprentice. Yeah, that sounds awesome, right? And then when it turns out to not be that, you're like, oh, I'm disappointed. It was yeah. this other thing, you know, that wasn't as cool. And you're like, yeah, but you came up with that on your own. Which it's like, yeah, that kind of is a... That's a really cool concept and idea. I don't know how it would actually play out. And it, it's obvious that they have this bigger picture uh, set. Because with Balin Skull, right? Like, his... His lightsaber and so his apprentice, like, their lightsabers weren't full red. They didn't really look necessarily orange, but they weren't full red, right? And that was really cool, too, like, seeing them and just seeing all the characters, or not all of them, but a lot of characters from yes. Rebels again was so good, especially uh, Sabine. Sabine was yeah. good, but, oh my gosh, like... Um, What's her name? Elizabeth Win- Winstead? Winstead? Yeah, she's freaking gorgeous. Oh yeah. my gosh, yes. Yeah, Hera. Oh, I yeah. love Hera. Like, that's the thing is, I loved Hera in Rebels, and then, like, her come to life was just, like, next level. And then, like, those memes and, and yep. GIFs and, and TikToks, like, are <laughs> hilarious. Uh, but, yeah, it was it was so good. It was such a good show. I felt like the lightsaber fighting was really top-notch. To me, I feel like they found that happy medium between 
the prequels and the originals where they weren't too fast paced and they weren't too slow and they had like that getting inside your head like kind of talking crap to your opponent too that like Vader did to like Luke yes. you know to get in his head as well as you know the intense fighting that you see in episode 1 as well and that was really cool and, and this it felt very like what Star Wars is supposed to be which is based off of like samurai right like that's was George Lucas's focus and main intention is like it's inspired by like samurai movies yes and you could feel that in this and that's cool to go like when you get George Lucas's vision strong in there like you're going down the, the correct path and also it's cool having you know just like Hayden Christian Hayden Christensen come in and kind of almost redeem himself oh in, yeah. like in the in the whole aspect of it I, I i liked him back in even just the first or the prequels whatever you want to call them um but uh, you know public perception was kind of horrible but now you see him in this and you're like man this guy can actually really act you know like well to be fair for hayden christensen well the writing was not even close to being there and how are you gonna build a if what you're working with is trash how are you gonna make it good when you got lines like Anakin you're breaking my heart it's just not <laughs> going to work out well when you got cheesy lines like that yeah right <laughs> no you're completely right and a lot of people have posted videos and this is what I love about you know people looking back and stuff is that there is both good and bad in the prequels like, they say, like, oh, yeah, I've, I've seen videos where they're, like, Anakin had the Riz back in the day. And then I've seen the opposite, too, where, like, his lines of where he's, like, you know, where he's saying about, oh, yeah, you torture me just because you're right there, but I can't have you, right? right? Like, we both have these things going on, you know, and he's, like, I just, I pretty much I'd rather have you just tell me to F off so that I don't have to deal with this anymore, you know, the pain. And then he's, like... I hurt sand. So both are there, right? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> like both are there, which is the garbage and then the gold. You have both George Lucas's gold writing and then his garbage writing. And that's partially because he had too many yes men around him. And he was too powerful at the point where he could literally just fire the 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 person that would give him a good critique. Right. And then replace him with somebody that was a yes man. You know? It's my guess that you threw it out. Oh, uh, no, sir. No, um... Were you in here cleaning up last night? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir, I was. Do you see that file on my desk now? <sighs> yeah, I don't know. I think I've proven my point. You are a worthless human being, Mr. Uh... Uh, Spadowski. Stanley Spadowski. May I call you Stanley? Okay. Stanley. You're fired! But I, I, I didn't... Get out! Which is what kind of Kathleen Kennedy is in a sense, but has no idea what she was doing. But she's learned. I feel like she's learned over time because things have improved. Because even in, in uh, episode three when he, you know, like with the kids scene and that, just that intensity and kind of just like his building of becoming Darth Vader, um, I thought was just excellent. But, you know, a lot of people disagreed with that back in the day. Right. And once again, speaking back to what the ambassador said, a big part of it was... Just George lines, Lucas right? being in charge and nobody going like, yeah, you know, maybe he should be killing kids and he should be killing Jedi Knights and Masters. Like, that would be way cooler and better. But I kind of fit, it fits in with the whole Sith, like, thing. It does, yeah. but it, it makes him irredeemable, too. Yeah. Well, the thing that would have really fixed those is different director. Like, let George do his magic. But he's always good under a good director. Mm -hmm. Look at Indiana Jones. Yes. What, the good ones. We're talking about the first three, not the <laughs> ones we don't acknowledge after that. But basically, George Lucas wrote them, but Steven Spielberg was what brought them to life. Totally, mm -hmm. yes. And he made some decisions on the fly that I'm sure George Lucas freaked out about that really came out as gold. Like, uh, originally they wanted... To have a, in Raiders Last Ark, a uh, nice, complex sword fight. Harrison Ford wasn't feeling well that day and did a joke <laughs> of a bang. And Spielberg was like, I love it. And they just did that instead. It 
was such a perfect stroke of genius. So having another director there can help a lot. Yeah, if definitely. If you're not, if directing's not the strong point. Right. right. And even uh, Ahsoka, Rosario Dawson, she was oh. great. She's like perfect for the role. Um, I, man, he, I, there wasn't really too many bad casting decisions in Ahsoka, in my opinion. I loved it. Like, David yeah. Tennant, you know, um, as Ku Yang, like, continuing from, from Clone Wars, uh, I think. And I don't know if he was also in Rebels, but yeah, like that, like, there's so, yeah, it was top-notch. Like, Ezra, that guy was, was so well done. He looks like the live, like... He looks just like him. It's yes. crazy. And acted like it was so top-notch. A lot of people... I feel like some people hated on Rosario Dawson. They're like, oh, she's too stoic. And I'm like, she's a Jedi. And she's in her... <laughs> she's in that phase, too, yes. of her, like... She, you can see her, like, in the, her master... Jedi master phase where she's, like... You know, like, chill. She's just, like, she's calm. You know, there are times where she gets pissed at Sabine, which rightfully so, yes, she totally. messed up. And there were times, and that's the thing too, is that she had her little redemption arc. Like, it was so well done. Balin Skull was an interesting character. His apprentice was interesting. That actor is a good actor too. That that Balin guy. I can't re- He's been in a lot of stuff, but... Yeah, he was Volsag yes. in the Marvel movies. Yes. And he was also the Punisher in, in Punisher Warzone. He is, he is superb, and it's really unfortunate, and it's really sad that he passed away. And I thought, oh, this is going to be a one-and-done season because they didn't say anything about them recasting him. And so I was like, is that because they have no intention on doing it in a second season, or is that because they're just leaving it to us to be like, well, let's wait and see how the show goes, the season goes before. Because now it's like, are they going to recast him, or are they just going to let that... They can't just let that... St- plot line die because it's so interesting yeah, it is, totally. and, and the character is so interesting too but who has that build because he's just like this towering beast of a man like he's huge and he's tall and that and then his acting is just so top notch it's like who can you bring on that's that good and i've seen one that comes close which is Liev schreiber okay because he has that same build he has that he's that caliber of an actor you know he can i'm sure he could pull off a beer like that and I, I think he could do it if they could get him. Like, I think he would be the perfect fit. Besides that, I've seen, like, other ones that are just, like, dumb. I'm like, Jack Black. I, but I think that one was a joke. <laughs> but when I was like, let's be a joke. <laughs> Technically, he's already in the Star Wars verse now. Yeah, he's that he, one dude. He's and, that uh, one retired uh, in, Imperial With Lizzo. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He already is in there. <laughs> but that wasn't that. a big cameo they had there. Everyone was talking about Jack Black and Lizzo. You know who else was in that episode? Uncle Fester. Christopher Lloyd. The yeah. Doctor. Yeah. Yeah, Doc. Doc. Yeah, that was so good. Uh, yeah, it's. I just feel like they're going the right direction with the Star Wars stuff. Thrawn was so perfect to me. The only thing was like... Yeah, he physically didn't look exactly the part, but it's been a while since he's seen these characters. You know, if you haven't gone to a reunion from high school and then you see him like 30 years later, people's going to look different. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. what do you expect, right? <laughs> so that's that's a whole other thing. But the way they left it too, I was like, are they going to do... I, I know that Filoni's supposed to do a movie. I haven't heard anything about them doing a show, but this show's called Ahsoka. And where she's at now is not in the same place that Thrawn is. They could literally do both. Where they could continue Ahsoka's story with Balin Skull and what he's doing. And I think she's even there too. Like the character of like, oh, this is where we're supposed to be. You know, of their journey. So I think they could do a second season of Ahsoka. And they could also do a Thrawn movie. Because it's like, Thrawn's there. It doesn't make sense to not do a Thrawn movie. That I mean, they kept on saying, heir to the Empire... Which is straight up the name of the books. Yes. The the Legends books. That was the title. So Filoni... Uh, that's another thing is that Filoni keeps on doing stuff on the sly that is so good. Like, he had that one episode uh, where he's like, oh, a long time ago, far, far away, right? And he had Ahsoka say, oh, yeah... Because Ku Yang was like, oh, I'll tell you the stories about this other universe, you know, about the stories and stuff. And she was like, tell me the first one. That's the best one. <laughs> right? Yeah. And you're like, at first, like, in it, you don't realize. But then afterwards, I was like, 
That was that was <laughs> smart. Like that was good. And then just continuing to do stuff like that, like sliding in Heir to the Empire, saying these things, he's sprinkling in these things for the hardcore fans. Yes. On the sneak, so that it's not too in the face of the CEOs, like you know, so they're not gonna lose their minds and be like, "Er, you stuck that in he's, there." You he's know? perfect for this too, since oh. he's like a hardcore fan of it anyway. So it's like you're getting the hardcore's perspective thrown into this. Wow. He's the reason why the Star Wars is TV series are being as successful oh, yeah, totally. as they are. Mandalorian is fantastic. Yeah, the only him and John Favreau are doing great. With that. Yeah, the only mishap they had was probably Boba Fett. Right, which was just I liked more it. of a. It I was, liked it too. No, it I liked it too. It wasn't bad. It's just like it could have been better. It didn't do the character of Boba Fett justice. It was True. great for storytelling and moving the character forward. the character it really forward was just trying to plug him Mandalorian. in right that's all it was right just it plugging was, him in yeah it, but <laughs> the the big difference with like star wars and the marvel series is with star wars you actually have kind of a showrunner unofficially that's actually moving things along marvel and that's lacking so you get shows all over the place because they don't Disney Plus had the idea of no showrunners. Yeah. Yeah, probably to save money so the CEOs can make more. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) You know, the big heads can make more. So, but I think this is a must-see, a must-stream, like... Or buy, or whatever we Whatever. (laughs) No, I mean, because the thing is, it's definitely worth having... If you don't want Disney Plus all the time, that's fine. Get it for this. Do Do your one month and binge it. Or, like, binge everything that's worth it uh, because there's a lot more stuff on there, but definitely for Ahsoka. Definitely. Yeah, I, I agree. It's a must stream. Get your eight, whatever. I don't know how, how much. I know it's going up again, so be prepared, guys. The price is going up again, just like Netflix, so. <laughs> yeah, it's annoying. It is. Yeah, they, I, I think they did the worst price hike of them all. Disney Plus when they added the ad free tier like well actually the price you're used to we're going to have that as ad, as the ad one and then you got to pay extra if you still want to keep ad free <laughs> it's like what yeah well they're just going back to what it was right like yeah, they're yeah. just turning streaming into cable. cable and you people are either going to deal with it or they're not and they're going to see it people are going to reflect it so I'm just ready for some. What's next? You know, Cause right? You know how it's like cable was these first, things repeat itself. Yeah. Okay. So what's next? It's well, like they're gonna combine. It might be that cable just does a comeback because people are like, I am spending more money on streaming services than I was on cable. What's going on here? Yeah, we definitely need to uh, protest with our dollars. But yeah, um, Pablo, you picked up uh, Wonder. Super Mario Wonder? Yes, so I picked up Super Mario Wonder. I got it for us so that we could review it. And because I have a Switch, I'm uh, I'm poor, unlike these other folks. Uh, <laughs> well, I got it too. I just haven't touched the game. <laughs> yeah, because you've been Mario busy. <laughs> yeah, with Spider-Man. But yeah, so at first, I was not... like I wouldn't say I wasn't feeling it, but it was just another Mario game to me at first. But... Nintendo has this smart way of doing things where they go with their games and they because they did the exact same thing with Bayonetta where they go, we're going to make it feel like this is you're going home again, right? Like, it's going to feel like it's the same good old stuff. You just got to dust it off, you know, and you get back into it. But then they slowly start introducing new stuff like Elephant Mario and then like Bubble. Then you have these Bubble Powers and there's like the Rock Drill Powers <laughs> And, and then they like introduce all these, these other things. So they have all the characters in this game. The story is that it takes place in the flower kingdom and there are these seeds called wonder seeds. And then there's also royal seeds and these royal seeds are super powerful. And Bowser steals one of these royal seeds and turns him, and he turns into a giant Bowser castle and he turns the whole flower kingdom under his control so every little uh every level in every kingdom every castle is now bowser controlled and then you face bowser juniors and they have 
like these wonder powers that can change the levels and make them like do crazy stuff. And then each level has crazy trippy stuff too, where you fought, where you find this wonder seed and it changes and it just becomes like this tree, this trippy crazy. And they're all different. Like there's, it's so like, where the the pipes are like worms and you got to ride them and then other ones there's like a dragon you're riding and then other ones like you're in lava and you can swim it and then other ones were like the gravity's opposite and the like it is nuts the game just gets crazier and crazier as it gets on but it's this great progression that takes you there that just flows perfectly uh as i said all the characters are here right the the main Mario characters are in there. And what about Waluigi? No, no. Okay, then not all the Mario characters are there. Okay, you're right. <laughs> so yeah, Wario's not in there either. But you know, you have your 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 protagonist characters are all in there, including the Yoshi's. The thing is, they have Yoshi's and and Nobit or Norbit or something like that. I don't know. But they are essentially like the the easy characters, right? Like they they don't get. They don't get hurt. They can get hurt, but, like, nothing happens to you, right? Like, it just blinks out, and you don't even, like, lose your coins, which I, if I had, if I could change anything, I would say that, like, when you do get touched, you should lose your coins, which I know seems kind of like a Sonic ripoff, but they kind of do that back and forth, so, but I feel like to add a little more brevity to that, like, yeah, it's fine that you can't die as the Yoshis or Nobbit or whatever it is, but at least, like, you should lose your coins so that, I go like, oh, I don't care if I get touched by any of the the bad characters. You know what I mean? Like, but you can still die. Like, if there's lava or, like, so some So are you goo. playing as Yoshi in these parts, or are you riding Yoshi? So you can change your character to Yoshi, but you okay. can ride as Yoshi as well. I don't... There's parts... There's some levels where you can actually ride Yoshi. You can also team up, and then as, like, Mario or any of the other characters, and you can ride Yoshi to, like, help you through the levels, too. Nice. So, but so you could do a two player like same thing like so if my daughter wants to join in I can add her as Yoshi and then I can just take ride Yoshi and control Yoshi so that she feels like she's playing along and continuing instead of that whole thing where like I'm only playing and then they have to do like the catch up or they die constantly which affects your overall lives and that can suck because you have that pool of lives so uh, but it, and, and it can get super chaotic too if you play with multiple people it was a nightmare I was like I'm not playing these with these kids you know <laughs> I was I was raging out a little bit because it got it, it gets very difficult and they have different ranges right like it'll say difficulty on the bottom right of the levels right it'll be one through five stars there's not that many five stars but it, there are it gets way more difficult as the game progresses obviously so good it's such a phenomenal game where like i said you there's these 10 coins these purple coins that you can collect like there's three of them in each level and then you can get these perks sort of or they call them badges right so like the flower prince he rides on your shoulder and he can wear these badges that give you perks and this is what kind of annoyed me but it also makes sense which is you know like when you play the other mario characters they have their own unique abilities right like peach can float she couldn't do that. And I was like, this is garbage. But you can find a badge where you float, right? Or, like, you could do, like, the Luigi... You know, like, usually Luigi has, like, that longer, uh, like, jump or whatever. Or, or, like, that is also a badge instead of it being his abilities. That kind of bugged me because I was like... But that's why I like playing as different characters because it's their abilities. Yeah. I feel like you still could have done the badges thing... And, and there would have been less badges, obviously, but, like, kept their personal uh, abilities. But so they, they took it away and, and did that instead. Uh, and I enjoyed it. It was a blast. It looks phenomenal. It plays phenomenal. Uh, I did beat it within a week because I was, like, hammering it hard, like, to the point where, like, my eyes were, like, hurting. I'd be like, oh, my God. And, then, and it was weird because, like, then they'd start bleeding and then my walls would start bleeding and I was like, what is going on? And then it turns out I was actually in Evil Dead Rise. No. Um, <laughs> we'll talk about that later. Next. Sounds like you're on drugs. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what it's like when you play this game because of those trippy wonder seeds. Like, put you in this world where you're like, this this does crazy. It's a blast. If you like Mario, you will love it. I know the kiddos had a blast playing it. They don't really play that well, but they still had fun. 
Uh, my wife, she enjoys these games. We've played a little bit, and she wants to play more, but, you know, priorities and stuff. She has it together. I, I don't. So, <laughs> or or whatever. So, it was a blast. I if, if you like Mario, if you like Nintendo, if this is what you're into, this elevates Mario to, like, a whole different level. It's so... Like I said, it's a it's a slow progression, but it works perfectly, and it's a phenomenal game. I I would say, like I said, if you're a fan, strong buy. Even if you're not a fan, still a buy. It's still a buy. Like as a game goes, because I'm like, there's still so many things I haven't gotten in that game. I'm like, I want to replay it. Nice. So I'm like, we'll do this giveaway at the end of, of the month, so I have a month to play it. <laughs> has a lot of replayability. You're saying? Yeah, there's yeah. replayability for sure. Because nice. that's the thing is, I played as Yoshi like probably half the game because the kiddo we would trade back and forth and then same thing with the wife like when she would play she'd be like i'm dying too much you know and so she would switch to i just wish they had more colors for the yoshis because they only have like green red and yellow oh maybe blue too but the kiddo's favorite is purple you know and, and there's also peach and she was pink so she's like i want to be purple or pink you know so and they don't have either of those Unless you're Peach. And I was like, yeah, but you're going to die with her. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, But yeah, it's, it's 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 a blast. I'd rather play as, like, my main is Luigi. I love Luigi. Uh, he's always my, uh, my favorite one. So it, it was a blast. Like I said, strong buy if you're a fan. Even if you're not, still a buy. Nice. And then uh, we have the ambassador. He picked up Spider-Man 2. Yeah, the Tyler. fastest selling PlayStation exclusive. When they when they came out to reach uh, high sales numbers, they sold more than any other game within its release day. So, kind of give us like a little background on so, what this one is about. So, basically, this one takes place after the first Spider-Man game, and then after the Miles Morales game, and so you're able to control both characters, and uh, so the level up system. You can improve one character here, or you can improve the other, or you can do combo moves as well, where uh, whenever you're teaming up with them, you'll be able to do a special move or ability, or sometimes if you're swinging with them, you can actually like kind of swing off of each other's webs to be able to keep going. Uh, there's, there's a lot of content to the game, and they do a lot of justice to both the characters, um, I've been probably having more fun with Miles, but the Peter Parker stuff is still really good and solid. Uh, it had some funny jokes at the beginning of the game where basically Peter, you know, because he's Spider-Man, it gets in the way of him holding a stable job. <laughs> so he, with his degree and everything, he decides, okay... I could be a teacher. <laughs> so he's <laughs> Professor Spidey now? Or? No, no. He tries to be Miles' school teacher. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice. So that, that was uh, pretty entertaining while it lasted. Uh, but a lot, of, a lot of good character development. And it, it's cool because a lot of people know who, who Spider-Man is out of like both Miles' group and uh, Peter's group of friends. And so they're always helping you out, regardless of which character you are. Genki is usually uh, Morales' go-to guy. And then uh, for Peter, MJ's always finding some scoops for him. I heard the suits in this were really cool. Yeah, you... you can you can get unlock certain suits. Like uh, right now, I'm doing like the American suit for. Uh, Miles Morales, where it has, like, the flag on there and everything. Oh, nice. That was the one that you actually have to unlock by doing uh, different uh, story, different, like, side quest events. Mm -hmm. And then you get the suit at the end of it. Okay. And a lot of cool concept, like, uh, in the Miles Morales part of it, there's an app where pe people at his school can ask him for help. Oh, and nice. they'll go up and swire and help them out with whatever they need to do. Like, one of them is just asking a girl to homecoming. <laughs> and you're doing different things to try to make it work. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, it's it's a lot. The side stories are a little outlandish, but just enough where it's fun. 
and uh, we'll see. Like the what they're claiming is the main villain is Craven, mm. which are, basically you get the feel that Craven's hunting down a lot of Spider Man's villains to try to test see how how good those villains are to decide if he wants to go after Spider Man or not. Mm. Um, unfortunately, the one villain that really got the raw end of it was Sandman. Why is that? Well, they, because Sandman, even in the comics, he's not like full-blown villain like most of them. He's not like right. Dr. Octopus who's trying to take over the world or kill Spider-Man. He's just trying to live his life and build to see his daughter. Mm-hmm. That, that's that's his motivations. He's not really as much of a villain as the other villains. Mm-hmm. So he usually has they usually have to do something to bring him in. A lot of times it's money because he's usually not good with money either. Right. So, so I've heard the graphics are really smooth in this one. What would oh, you say? Yeah, the graphics are really smooth. Uh, one thing I noticed that's kind of cool is uh, with the original Spider-Man, the little bit I played of it, uh, when you're going to different parts of the city, you kind of get some load time happening. Mm-hmm. There's no load time. You just kind of can swing throughout oh, nice. New That's York. Good. It's like the PlayStation mm-hmm. 5 is really showing some uh, good power here. And definitely, like, yeah, the. Yeah, overall, the PlayStation 5 on this runs it well. The only annoying part, but that's just with how PlayStation 5s are. Mm-hmm. When you first turn on, it sounds like a jet turning on. <laughs> but then it quiets nice. down after. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's not like the original PS4s where those things were loud. Oh my god. <laughs> it, it's it's better than that. So, yeah. It, it's definitely... Uh, I would give it a strong buy. And I would... It's definitely worth getting day one. There's so much content on there. And the side quests that keep showing up are a lot of fun. Um, they even have side quests with uh, Miles' uncle. Oh, cool. Because his uh, uncle is it's trying cop, to... Right? No, no, that's his... No, no. His uncle's a that's villain. Like a... Oh, yeah. <laughs> the, prowler. the Prowler. The Prowler. His uncle right, is the yeah. Prowler. Yeah, if you watch Into the Spider-Verse, they kind of try to make his uncle kind of like Prowler and that. So mm-hmm. it was pretty cool, but... The difference is in this one, he doesn't die like he does in Into the Spider-Verse. He's just really trying to turn a new leaf. And so, in his own way, he's like, can you help me fix the mistakes I've done? Have New York be safer, but still, whatever you find, you can use to improve on your guys' method. So, how is the symbiote suit, Spider-Man? Haven't gotten to it yet. Oh no! It, oh it's... my gosh! Because I, I, because that's the thing is, to me, I go. Miles is more fun because he has a venom blast. He's young. He's different. But then once you introduce the symbiote to Spider Man, then it just goes like, okay, now I want to be symbiote Spider Man because he has the tendrils. I just remember Maximum Carnage where he could do like the shield that was so cool and just you know the tendrils and he would slam them together. And stuff, and I, I just feel like at that point you would want to play more as, as, and I'm sure the, the the game probably progresses that way too, where you're like, hey, Miles is cool and stuff, but then once you get this thing, like, then you probably want to play more as him, you know, and then once you get used to that, then like you might lose your powers or whatever, get rid of the symbiote. I don't know, because yeah, I know there's Venom's part of this, Craven. So I wonder what storylines too they're putting. So is it like, is there's... it Craven's last hunt? Is it, you know, there's, like what symbiote story are we going with? There's so, another yeah. villain in this, too. Mm-hmm. He hasn't really done anything evil yet, but he's there. Norman Osborn yeah. is uh, deeply in this story. Norman and Harry. Okay, yeah. But haven't really shown anything yet. But I kind of have a feeling Norman's going to be either set up for the next game or is going to be right. involved towards the end of this one. And it's kind of cool what they did with Norman. You could definitely tell, like, likeness, they kind of did their own thing. 
but I still get a lot of like William Dafoe vibe from him. Nice. Like they really like play him kind of like William Dafoe, mm. which I think is probably the best approach because he's well, perfect. The yes. nor- best Norman Osborn was <clears throat> William Dafoe. He really. Despite wearing a goofy mask in the original <laughs> movie, he was still the star of the movie. Mm. It was the nineties one. Well, yeah, the well, the new <laughs> one, like they they changed it so good. I love it when he's like, "Norman's not home anymore, honey." <laughs> <He's> like, <laughs> <laughs> like, but it worked. Like he <laughs> totally pulled it off, right? But yeah, like oh yeah, that game looks so good. I've seen so many things. I've seen so many cool suits, like the Chadwick. Or the, the Black Panther, Chadwick mm-hmm. Boseman a tribute suit and stuff. And even, like, you can go to the embassy and stuff. I've seen that. I've seen... I don't know if this is real, but I saw something, and it said that there's a White Power Ranger yes, I homage as well. I don't know if that's brand new or made up or what, but I'm I was like, sure, that yeah. would be so cool, too. You can never tell what the internet's like. Yeah, like, <laughs> what, but it looks so cool that you're like, yeah, it could be a mod or something. Yeah. I don't know, but... So, yeah... It, it just, it looks so phenomenal. It looks like a great game. And uh, so what was your grade? Well, give a strong buy. And the hacking, it's pretty crazy with like some of the hacking you have to do. You're you're actually doing haptic feedback in the triggers to, to try to get it right. Nice. Because, I mean, we all know where Marvel, where Marvel Spider-Man games on the PlayStation got the roots from arkham yeah yeah very much arkham (laughs) but i'm okay with that because i mean they took a good formula and made it better yeah you need to get some prima team that'll really clear that up you know (laughs) but (laughs) i actually saw very funny i saw this hilarious tiktok where it's somebody they're going they're singing the spider-man theme song but they're doing it as batman just using the bat thing to swing from light pole to light pole and they're like when you can't afford a ps5 (laughs) and and i was like that's me Uh, I mean, if you're playing Arkham Knight, they're releasing a Robert Pattinson Batman suit. I saw that, and it looks really cool. But then they pulled it real quick. I don't know what happened, if there was glitches, but it does look sick. So, And then I think it just came out for the Switch. Or did they put it out, the collection for everything? I know it came out oh, for the sure. Switch as well. But I'm not sure. I, I think they did do a... Uh... Another collection. Yeah. I know Gargoyles uh, Remastered also came out for the Switch. I don't know if it's for everything as well, but I know it's out for the Switch. I know because that's the, the only thing that I, I can get new games on. Back, yeah. I heard they're supposed to do a live action, actually. Great. Which I can't imagine that, but I want to. Well, I'll, you know, can CGI has just exploded. So, oh, yeah. You know, it's great. So Get the rock. Speaking of... <laughs> Speaking of CGI, which there wasn't much in this movie, which was uh, Five Nights at Freddy's, which they really... I do know going into this, I read that like all the animatronics was kind of real. It's not like CGI'd or whatnot. So that was that was uh, exciting going into the movie. But uh, Did they have like uh, someone in a suit or was it just all animatronics? Yeah, it was uh, mostly uh, suited up. Uh, I think stuff, that would be so. your best approach for something like that as the suit instead of cgi mm-hmm. but um if you've played the video game uh pablo's played it i haven't so i was going in as just like a movie goer mm-hmm. into this um not knowing exactly the whole story um it was cool at the beginning they did show like little excerpts from the like the i guess the arcade game or or whatnot um what were your thoughts on it so, like you said, I, I have played the games. I've played all of them because they were on Xbox uh, Game Pass. I don't know if they are right now because I don't have Xbox Game Pass. Uh, but but I did, and, and I think, I don't know if it was the last year or whatever, but I, I played them all, and I'm not big into horror games because uh, I'm a little girl inside, but <laughs> I get scared easy, but... So I was like, okay, you know, it's, it's Halloween, it's horror month, so I'm going to play them. This is a big deal. I want to see what all the talk is about. And so I played them, and for their time, they were, it was a brilliant idea. 
But of course, like the it kind of like I don't know. You get over it quickly though. Like especially as it progresses, you go like, okay, this is just the same thing. Like you can't like it's hard to reinvent that wheel, you know, mm-hmm. over and over. But it was it was good while it lasted and what they did because it really and it, and what's great and I can see how like younger people are into it because they like that jump scare. There's not blood. There's not gore. There's not anything. But it's that all about that jump scare. It's about the intensity. Because you're a security guard, and that's what they do set this up really well in the movie. And it seemed like they did, they were going that path really well at first, where they're like, oh yeah, first night, you know, you watch the training video, which I think was almost the same video in the video game. And I, but I thought they were going to go deeper into like, okay, you have to switch from all these different monitors to keep an eye on the animatronics because they come to life at night, right? And so that's how you keep them in place by keeping your eye on them. But as soon as you switch your camera, then they could move. So it's a lot just like managing your stuff because you can look at one specific or you can look at all of them. You know, like it's it's just managing stuff and you're looking through the different cameras and they get more aggressive as the night goes on. And, and it is terrifying. It gets those jump scares, but it's no gore. It's just the jump scare. It catches you off guard. And the way that they, you know, the second game, they added like the vents and, you know, the tunnels and stuff and their sensors in there. So you have more that you have to maintain and keep an eye on. So it's more difficult. And then eventually like they end up at your house. I think like that was the last game. They end up in your house and like you can hide in the closet or under the bed, curtains, whatever. But you, I think, I don't know if, I want to say you have, you had like a camera system. Maybe you had like a handheld thing and you just like flip through the different, you know, cameras that you have in your house and around your house and stuff. And they kind of touch on that. Maybe it kind of a little But for the most part, they really, like, after a few nights of him at the place, it really went off on its own thing. Well, honestly, I I think I counted, and it was only four nights that (laughs) that the movie really went into, which is, I don't know, I didn't, uh, so, not not until I talked to you, because you played the games, uh, did I really know, like, hey, the concept of Five Nights at Freddy's is because it progresses each night. And they didn't even throw any, like, they didn't even throw any story to that. They showed the monitors every now and then. But they're really trying to focus on this, uh, this brother and sister, um, like, what, like, story. I thought it was his daughter because she Mm -hmm. was, I, he, I thought he was older, right? Mm -hmm. But it's actually, yeah, it's actually his sister. So it goes into this story of... Where his bro, when he was a kid, his brother was kidnapped by somebody, and they never found him, and they he, don't know who did it. They like he relives the dream every night. Yeah, for it, um, which was kind of weird. I don't know how he gets travels back to his dream every night. Well, because he was reading that book. Remember, he was that reading that book about like dream traveling. Uh, it's kind of like because I did something similar where I was like obsessed with lucid dreaming after I saw. That one uh, movie about Inception. Dream. Inception. So I was like, I want to learn how to master this power, right? So then I started do like reading on it and doing my info, and then like doing techniques that I read, like so that you could be in control of your dreams and stuff. It was it's and that's essentially like kind of what he was doing, so that he could go back to that same dream and like discover like who stole his brother. Like, who kidnapped him and stuff like that. See, I get that obsession, but it just didn't make sense because he's a night security guard and he's supposed to be watching monitors. <laughs> right. No, it didn't <laughs> make it, sense. And then, then he's sleeping on the job. He's sleeping and, on the job, and yeah. And then there's, like, a cop that comes by and she's very friendly. You don't know if there's some sexual tension or oh, there, whatnot. Oh, there yeah, was. There definitely no. <laughs> was, but it, n- it never, like, traveled down that route. Yeah, no. No, um, I didn't. Let me just say that the acting was horrible in this movie is complete dog shit like <laughs> it, was, it was so bad like the, the way the way um that cop was delivering her lines was like so vague like i know they're supposed to like give you like intrigue but she was just deli- oh it's just this and then just like no emotion that's funny because i got strong j-law vibes from her but probably <laughs> more like x-men j-law vibes okay, you know journey, yeah. <laughs> and so but uh yeah I, I mean, and and the thing is, the story was interesting, like, okay, where, I don't know, they just made it weird, though, too, because they're like, oh, the ghost of children are in these animatronics, yes. and then the ghost of these children are killing people, 
that didn't really make sense. Right. But then there was somebody who's in charge of all of them, and he's the original serial killer of these kids who's controlling them and killing more people. I don't... It was... It was it, weird. I don't know how he is controlling them. Also, at the same time, they had this other side story where it's like his aunt's trying to take his sister yeah. away. Yeah. And then she hires people to go, like, trash the, the five, or the Freddy Fazbear's, whatever yeah. it's called, whatever it's called. Yeah. Um, and then they go in, they get killed. You know, I was like, okay, finally. And they do it during the day when he's not even, like, in charge. <laughs> yeah. Like, they're like, if they would have done it when he was sleeping on the job at night, like, got him, <laughs> yeah. you know? But right. it's like, dude locked up. They stole his keys because, like, the chick... You know, babysits his sister, yep. and then you're like, oh, okay. And it was just, I don't know, because I think the guy is from Hunger Games, and uh, I don't, I don't know if he's having trouble. I guess he's having trouble finding work as well as the character, because the character can't, sense, the it? character can't find work because he beat up this man because he was security at the mall and he thought this man was kidnapping this kid. And, and I don't know why I only made this connection now, which is he saw a repeat of what happened to his brother because they didn't connect that very well. They didn't. If they would have connected like he did that because he saw his childhood happening all over again, you'd be like, oh, that They could have started sense. off the movie with that, like with like his brother getting taken. Right. Instead of like this whole like, okay, he needs a job. And then in a, you know, I don't know if we should spoil this, but like... Um, we already have spoiled the movie. Yeah, pretty much. Okay, so like the guy that hires him is working at a temp agency, and he's like, "Oh, I have this other thing. It's like, you know, I don't know, I don't know if you'll like it or not." It's like he doesn't even try to sell the job to him, <laughs> even though like he's connected because he's the one that took the kid, and it's like, oh man, it was just, it was just a crap movie. Oh yeah, I'm only figuring out those dots too where he saw his last name yeah and then he connected that that was that was the his brother that he kidnapped but where was his like that yeah i was like there's so much of this where where they just failed to connect those dots because like the where they were act, foreshadowing but it was just a mess the first act was set up great because you're like okay we got this intrigue you know you're starting off you see the other security guard getting just or was that him at the very beginning it was another security guard, right? Yeah. That gets killed. Um, yeah, it was a different one. Um, so, y- y- it's set up good, and then you're like, you have like this mysterious, like these robots, you don't know what's going on with them. And then they went this whole route with the kids and ghosts, and the kids magically show up in the dream now because he's there. And it's it's just, it was it was weird. I, th- I feel like they should have just stuck with the original story, which is essentially like these animatronics are haunted, yeah. And they will murder you, and you just have to maintain, like... That's the other thing, is you have to maintain your battery power, too, mm-hmm. right? So you can't keep your you can't keep your monitors on all the time, because you'll run out of battery, like, early in the night, and then they can just do whatever they want. So, like, it's, it's just management, right? And, like, figuring out the algorithm to finish the game. Uh, but, yeah, if they would have stuck with that, because to me... And they could have done things, too, because you don't care about the character, because you're like, dude, straight up just assaulted this dad in front of his kid. Yeah. And because they didn't connect those dots, you don't understand why necessarily. Mm-hmm. And even they, like with the, like the, the, his sister was annoying. I didn't really care for him either. So even like when they took her into the place, I was like, Oh, I don't really care if she dies. Cause she's annoying to me. Right. Well, I don't know if they're trying to like, uh, point to the fact that she's on the spectrum or something. I, I it was, it was just so weird. I, it but didn't explain so well. I'm just gonna say this. I'm just glad it was on Peacock and I didn't, <laughs> and I didn't go out there and spend money on this movie because then I would have been really pissed. I, I would have been upset if even talk nerdy to me bought a subscription <laughs> to Peacock to pay for this, even though it's not us, you know, that that's paying for it necessarily because you know we make money through other things. But like, I still would have been like. <laughs> why did we choose to have peacock like with no ads or whatever so because this is a strong pass for me like strong pass i mean i, I want to give it some credit because i don't think it's the worst thing ever and because 
it, Peacock, I don't think you have to buy it, right? You just need like a... No, you just watch. Oh, no, oh, the, oh, you mean the subscription, the Peacock, is that what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's included. Uh, so, I, it's not worth paying for it, for sure. Like, it's not worth... Is it worth your time? I think... Uh, like, Because my wife and I were talking about other horror movies and other stuff the entire time of this movie. So, at, at most, I could say like it's it's a week... It's think, a weak stream. I think it's it has a great concept of it, you know, but it just didn't execute really well. It didn't execute well, right? <clears throat> and I know this is a horror movie, but I expected just a little bit more out of the. I acting. don't even mind that it was PG thirteen because you can pull it off, like the game pulled it off, right? Like you, there's no. That's why the younger people can play it because there's no gore and there's no anything like that. Uh, and speaking of of that type of thing, like I watched Hereditary, they set this up perfectly. Right, like this movie was brilliant and also super messed up because you okay, it's called hereditary. Okay, so it's gonna be about how you pass things down to your kids, because you even see in the poster there's the mom and there's the daughter, right? So you go like, Oh, she's gonna pass and then even right away they go like she sets up, Yeah, I've had mental illness in my family, a lot of my family, they've killed themselves, you know, um, and stuff. So you're like, Okay, this so you're p- paranoid that you have mental illness and then you pass this down to your kids and stuff. And so then it, it even plants that seed in your own head. Like, do I have mental illness in my family? Do Have I passed mental illness to my kids? Are, are they going to have, you know, are they going to be bipolar, you know, or whatever, right? So you go like, so that's a thing. And, and just the way they set up things so well in that movie, like the grandmother passes away and even at the funeral, she's like, yeah, I'm seeing a lot of people that I that I don't recognize, you know, and that's kind of weird, but, you know, thanks for coming, and I appreciate that you're here to, you know, celebrate her life or whatever, right? And so you're like, okay, that's just like, you just think it's a one-off line the way that they play it off, but it's a foreshadowing moment that plays off later, and you see the dots connect once you get to that point, right? But at that one, it, pay, it takes a long time for that one line to pay off. There is something that happens early in, in the movie too, and this one, and they go the little girl. They keep on asking her. She eats like candy, or she'll be eating food, and they they ask her. Do you, her ever, not well. Everyone in her family asks her. Does that have nuts in it? Does that have nuts in it? Does that have nuts in it? And she's like, no, 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 right? Like, so right away you go, all right. She's allergic to nuts. That's well established, right? That was super smart. And you go, boom, once again, foreshadowing. And so right away you have that dread. And, and if you have kids, you go like, oh my God, you know, like, what are my kids allergic to? You? And what if, you know, because they even say like, do we have an EpiPen? No, we don't. Okay, we need to get an EpiPen. You know, like, so it puts that same fear of you if you're a parent. I don't know what it does to you if you're not a parent, but still, it even did things to me as a sibling uh, later on in the movie, which, you know, like, so the the brother, he wants to go to this party and the mom's like, take your sister. But she's way younger right and she she is a weird creepy kid and she like she does these clicks too like she goes like you know and stuff like that and it's weird and it's creepy and she's a creepy kid and she says weird creepy stuff and she writes in this book and does creepy drawings and it's weird and creepy another thing that sets up for down the road right and like i said he goes to this party and they show it and this he goes to this party and some girl's just like crushing nuts and you're like here it is. And he's like, just, he's like, just piss off. Leave me alone. I'm going to go do, you know, cause he's, he's looking to go talk to chicks. Right. And so, and do his thing. So she's off to her own devices, you know, and they're serving cake and you're like, oh my God. And, and so it sets right away. It sets right away. And so she, so she starts freaking out. He takes her to the ER right away. And they're like, he's just hauling right to the ER in this small town you know, or a hospital or whatever. And there's, and then he veers off because there's something dead. There's something dead in the road and he veers off. And the little girl, she was, she couldn't breathe. So she had her head out the window and he hits a pole and she just gets decapitated. And I was like, and he stops, right? He stops. And I started freaking out because I was like, oh my God, what if that was me as a sibling and something horrible like that happened, right? Um, because I mean, it's not to that level, but I, I've, I've hurt my brother by accident when he was younger, you know, and he was like similar, like he's like 
almost 10 years younger than me. And I, to this day, still feel horrible about it. And I had flashbacks of that. Like, that brought that back up to the surface. But then it multiplied it, right? Like, times a million. Because it's like, oh, my God, what would you do? Like, if you killed your sibling by accident, what would you do? And you're like, oh, my God. Like, to me personally, I was like, I would just, like, I would be like, what? why is he not killing himself? Like, I would kill myself. Like, I would do literally anything. Drive and do that same pole. Anything, right? Like, so that I would not have to deal with the guilt of it or have to deal with my parents ever. And he, but, I mean, and that's the thing is his acting was top-notch. The, everyone in this movie was top-notch because, so, like, he goes home and then he parks and he just goes to bed. Now, he doesn't go to sleep because he's messed up, right? Like, you can't sleep after that. Who could sleep after that? And so he's just there sleepless. The mom's like, all right, I'm going to go get groceries. And she sees the bo- the headless body in there and loses it. And the way that she reacted is probably the same way that I would re- react if that happened to me as a parent. Because, and that I related to that. And that messed, that meant, dude, this movie just continuously messed me up as it progressed. And, uh, and so then it turned into instead, like, he starts hearing the clicks that his sister does. So then it changes from like this hereditary thing, like, oh, of mental illness to. Oh, this is a haunting movie now. His sister is now haunting him, right? Because then stuff starts happening to him at school and stuff, and it's creepy and it's weird. And uh, and then like sometimes he sees her, like he'll see her like in corners of the room or whatever, and it's it's creepy. And then, but like I said, they they plant this other seed where they put like a flyer into the door slot of the house and it says seance, you know, it's something about seances, but it's a quick moment and then they move on. And, you know, and, and the mom's going to this grief counseling meetings and stuff. And, uh, and so they, you know, even that, like she talks to this lady and this, this lady starts, that's how it goes. The lady's like, oh yeah, I can talk to my grandson, you know, I'll show you and stuff. And then the mom's like, okay, great. Now I can talk to my daughter, you know? So she gets the whole family in on it, you know, and stuff. And the dad's like, I don't want to be part of this, but the son's like, okay, fine, you know, so that he gets some kind of closure, right? Um, but, uh, yeah, so then it goes from that, and then, um, then the mom finds out that her, her mom, that her mom, the grandma, essentially, she was part of this giant cult, and that this is just part of some giant scheme so that this spirit can take over the grandson and be like this cult leader, like he's like, like a king of some level of hell or, or some, I don't know. It's, it just, and then it turns into like this cult movie, like by the, it's messed up. The movie is messed up. It's crazy. It's phenomenally well done. That's all I have to say about that.